what do you see are some common challenges that churches encounter when they're really trying to engage their communities? And with those yeah. challenges, how can using stock content uh, help to address those? You know, one of our taglines for our companies is, we wanna do media so you can do ministry. You got a great creative project in your mind and you don't always have the time to execute it exactly how you want to, well, let us come alongside. We've got a lot of resources, a lot of design elements that you can use and still create what's in your mind or at least kind of start from this with some clay on the table already and then take it to what you want and hopefully save you a lot of time, process. We've got some stock footage that you can rely on, begin to build something with. And then maybe supplement as you see fit, but hopefully save you some money in the process. Hey, friends, welcome back to the BoxCast podcast. You know me, Gary, community manager. And today we got a very awesome guest. But before we get into that, I just want to say how incredibly thankful I am for your time. It's one of the most precious things that we have in this world is time. It's also one of the coolest things that we have is time. And I'm grateful for yours. So thank you for tuning in and viewing. If you have any questions about BoxCast or anything in and in related to our guests today, just check them out in the description below. Of course, we always invite you to go and book a demo with us so you can test out our awesome, power-driven, amazing software and hardware encoders, as well as our sites feature. And there's some new things coming down around the corner that I can't tell you yet about, but you'll find out later in a future episode. All right, let's get cracking. Today, we have one of my favorite people ever of all time. I don't consider him a business acquaintance. I consider him a friend. His name is Jeff Parker. He is the director of business development with Lightstock and Igniter Media. Jeff, welcome to the BoxCast podcast, buddy. How are you? Gary, dude, I'm excited to be here with you today. Yeah, man. I'm excited to have you. This is the man, the myth, the legend. If you're not familiar with Igniter, please go <laughs> check them out. Igniter.com. Igniter Media is amazing. They have some awesome graphics and media, but Lightstock is also part of their sister brands and Lightstock. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to let Jeff tell us what, what you guys do over there. Yeah. So with Lightstock, you know, we uh, were a website where we help the creators in the space with stock photos, uh, stock video design elements. And so we kind of give you the raw materials and let you create what you want to create for whatever project uh, you're, you got brewing. So we love to kind of come alongside um, different creatives of, of sorts and let them create the projects they want. For Igniter, we specialize a little bit more on the ready-made media side of things. Mm -hmm. Instead of you having to create anything, come download exactly what you want and search. We got thousands of products for you to look at. And so we kind of service uh, both parties in the sense of um, you do it for me or I want to do it for myself, any spectrum in between. Uh, we've got uh, a product that we hope can service everything that you need. So, yeah, it's actually not just igniter stuff, but light stock stuff is, is pretty sweet. I know we used it a few times, um, in our own scope just so we can create some, you know, really cool Christmas yeah. and Easter and night of worship material. Um, and it's, it is top quality. It's really good. If you haven't checked that out, check out the link below um, to go check out Lightstock and what they offer. They're, I'm telling you, it is, in my opinion, it is a primo faith-based content service that really is, it's not expensive at all. For the, the amount of graphics and media and things that you get out of it, it's it's pretty much top notch for me. It's what we use at my church. It's what we use here at Boxcast. Actually, believe it or not, we do have a, we do use it here at Boxcast. So, yeah. go check it out today. Well, but with Jeff it. on the board with us today, Jeff, give me just a little bit of background about you. Um, uh, I know a couple of really cool tidbits about you, but get, give my my followers, not my followers, our followers, our, yeah. our friends here, give them a little bit about you, Jeff. Tell them what you do and what you're about, and and uh, how'd you get started here. Yeah, so um, it's kind of an interesting journey. Uh, we can linger on any parts if it makes sense. But, you know, out of school, um, I'm, you know, I've been out of school for 20, 25 years, but I was an accountant by trade. You know, in my mind, I was a, like a numbers guy, an Excel guy. Uh, and about four years of kind of living corporate life, I met Rob Thomas, the owner of Igniter Media and Lightstock. We didn't have Lightstock at the time. And in fact, Rob had just started Igniter Media. This was even before YouTube existed. Mm -hmm. These were like, he was creating short films for pastors to use on a Sunday morning. And as I kind of met him and then joined him in, in helping kind of build Igniter Media, I realized I had a little bit more in me than just some accounting and, uh, you know, and nothing wrong with being an accountant. Uh, but 
I, uh, I started to kind of have this like creative storytelling stuff inside of me. And so for, from 2004 to 2015, I was with Rob, uh, helping build Igniter from, you know, and we started with mini movies and we built countdowns and backgrounds and any number of other products along the way, uh, which was really good. If we want to linger on kind of what happened between 2015 and, um, and beyond happy to do that. But, uh, in 2016, I jumped into church ministry. And so now I wasn't just a, um, a, you know, kind of a creator of servicing the church. I was a practitioner within right, and did that for seven years. And now that I've been back at Igniter and Lightstock, there's been a sweet little journey of like, uh, being able to, um, service and care for people that were in the position that I kind of was just in mm-hmm. just a few years ago. And so there's been a great combination of I've been on this, I've been on kind of bookends from the creative creation of product side of things. And then I've also been a practitioner within the church from being in vocational ministry. And so that's been a little bit of my arc and it is a sweet time to kind of get to be back at Igniter and Lightstock and jump into still for serving sure. churches, even though I'm not on a church staff any longer. Yeah, man. I mean, it, and it's cool because you were you were the guy manufacturing the tents for people, and then you went out to be the guy who actually installed the tents, and now you've <laughs> yeah. come back with experience on how to make those tents better. So it's awesome. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that's experience. a good way to put it. <laughs> I'm super stoked to have Jeff here because Jeff has a unique perspective on some of the things that we at BoxCast are trying to help churches uh, become a little more fluent with. And that is definitely in their side of content creation. And when we say like content creation, we're not just saying you're you're live stream, like we're talking about things that help you engage your communities better. So Jeff, I have a series of questions here that I just want you to kind of riff on, go, just go ham on them. Um, but so the first thing I want to ask you is like, what do you see are some common challenges that churches encounter when they're really trying to engage their communities? And more so with those challenges that you see, because you you do have experience in this, with those yeah. challenges, how can using stock content uh, help to address those? You know, a lot of times, and I'll speak from like a, a church staff perspective, uh, and, and it depends on the role for sure, but a lot of times people jump into um, a church staff environment um, because of a particular calling or they want to be around people or they want to give their heart to to something and they kind of have a vision in their mind of what that looks like. And then depending on your role, and let me speak specifically to like a videographer or to a designer, all of a sudden you are in the nitty gritty um, and you, you get kind of lost in this. I'm constantly creating stuff and now I'm not even getting to to dream a little bit or um, kind of flex my creative muscles. I'm having to just hit deadline after deadline after deadline. And, and I've got to go on a shoot and get all this stuff. And so I, that to us, that's a, we, for one, we get that, you know, and you know, one of our taglines for our companies is we want to do media so you can do ministry. And we think anyone on um, is doing ministry in a variety of ways that doesn't have to look, um, you know, cookie cutter for any, especially with different roles on staff. But I think one of the things we love to come alongside is, Hey, you got a great creative project in your mind and you don't always have the time to execute it exactly how you want to. Well, let us come alongside. We've got a lot of resources, a lot of design elements that you can use and still create what's in your mind, or at least kind of start from this with some clay on the table already and then take it to what you want and hopefully save you a lot of time, process, hours. We also know church budgets are a tricky thing, especially right now in particular, it seems like with economy and inflation. And so we can we can help a lot. Maybe you can't afford contract to go do certain stuff. We got some stock footage that you can rely on, begin to build something with, and then maybe supplement as you see fit, but hopefully save you some money in the process. Because Lightstock, it is, I mean, we can say a lot of things about it, but for a couple hundred bucks a year, it's really affordable. Oh yeah, no, it totally is really, really affordable. Yeah. And I mean, those challenges that you see, because I mean, you, you you touched on a budgetary challenge. Like, I mean, that's a huge yeah. thing for churches. It's like a budget. I mean, 
in case you're watching and you don't know this, churches don't get funding because they are <laughs> selling something. Okay. Uh, yeah. They get, they get funding because people are tithing and that's how pastors are paid to be on staff. And that's how utilities get paid yeah. in church. So a little, a little church finance <laughs> one-on-one there, but the idea and the concept of budget is a huge challenge for a lot of churches. So, I mean, so Lightstock takes yeah. the approach and I've seen this cause we've talked about this and I've yeah. seen it, but you guys take the approach of being offering so much value for the cost is really it's out it's out of this world like i mean it's, yeah. it's 40 dollars for your unlimited plan right and that's that's 40 dollars a month i mean that's that's like really Get good you. yeah i mean really good i i remember um i remember a time where you know we were jumping into like all these other services like i think it was every other week we were trying to find a new service because we just couldn't find the right one to fit us in a content space. So, I mean, just having an affordability aspect as a budgetary challenge is great. But when, when we address that kind of concern, like if you were stuck on the budget, how would you, how would you think churches can leverage, um, you know, and strategically prepare to leverage stock content to kind of like maximize their outreach efforts? Cause I mean, that's a huge piece of the puzzle, right? Is like, well, yeah. what, what do we see this being able to accomplish for us outside of just giving us some cool stuff to use for the future, you know, like for the one little thing we're looking at for. Well, I mean, a, a couple of thoughts. I mean, one, first of all, going just tying up that, that budget stuff is no one likes bad video, right? I mean, and everyone can kind of spot that bad video from a mile away, but few people understand the cost of a great video. Um, they, they underestimate the time that goes into it, the creative energy that goes into it. And then all the other, the, the equipment of it all and, and, and just any of the other treatments and mixing and, you know, editing and post-production, all of that, they, they misunderstand, they, no one value, I mean, few people value it. And so, uh, but at the end of the day, um, you know, video design, it's, it's storytelling, it connects, you know, images are powerful, story is powerful in our mind, and it has a way to break through some of our walls and defenses in a way that um, other mechanisms can't as easily. And, uh, and so when you think about connecting to, um, you know, either from an evangelism perspective or sharing kind of specific just stories that the God's placing on our heart, story, video and story and design can tell stories quicker or capture our hearts differently than, you know, speaking or preaching or singing or some of those other avenues can, can, can do. And so um, now you can, spend thousands upon thousands and of, of dollars on video and, and, and only get one done in a month, or you can get a little bit of a head start with some stuff of either stock footage or stock design, some design elements, stuff like that to give you a head start and still have that excellency, but get you further down the road. And so you can still do all the things that you're trying to do from a storytelling perspective or from an excellence and design perspective. Uh, but get again, a head start down the road and make it something you want, but start with some clay that's already on the table for you. Do you find, um, do you find that like when church staff members, whether they be like a, a lead pastor or maybe it's a youth pastor who's doing some of the graphic media, like what is, what would you say <laughs> right. is light stocks? I mean, cause that happens, man. I mean, Canva I came know. out. I can't tell you how many times my wife's <laughs> like, like, we're going to use Canva. And I'm like, that's like Microsoft paint in some regards, honey, come on, but <laughs> it's fine. But like in, in, in regards to like that alone, like what is like the average church, you know, size would you think is using light stock and, and, for their, yeah. you know, for their, their content creation. I mean, to your pool, you know, there's a spectrum uh, and it is neat to see both for igniter and Lightstock. the, you know, we got the itty bitty um, small church. That's a couple staff members and to, yeah, the worship leader or the youth pastor can is a Jack of all trades and wears five hats to the Right to the larger church that has a, a production and a design team and a videography team of four or five, and they're still looking to supplement. I do think we see um, the average on the lower end of that um, a, mm. a lot of times. And uh, because that's where, I mean, that's where you see people wearing multiple hats and genuinely they've got to, the sounds of this, you know, to, for lack of a better word, they've got to cheat something 
You know, they've got to cut. Right. They, they've right. got to. Um, they can't. You don't want them to sell their souls to kind of create a good video and lead this and lead this and lead this. And so they need help in some way. And, uh, and frankly, that's one of the reasons why we've done what we've wanted to do is we want to help people that are wearing multiple hats and and ease the the burden in some form or fashion in whatever way that we can. And we think this is a pretty good way that the way we're wired that we can do this, knowing that um, for s- smaller churches that don't have the, s- the staff uh, and they're trying to um, do a lot of different things, hopefully we can help ease the 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 lift. I think that's one of the, like the things that, you know, when you start your own business, I mean, Jeff and you and I have talked about my business yeah. a lot of times, so I'm not going to get into that. But like when we talked about the business aspect, like building a business or building a model of business, b- people who start businesses such as myself have come to realize, you know, that that there's a thing that we don't take into consideration a lot of times. And that's that's actually the time factor. Um, right. You know, how long how long has it taken me to do X, Y or Z in my business? And I think that's the same thing for churches like th- they think. I feel, and this has been my experience in the past, that churches have this mind concept uh, in play where it's like, okay, well, we've got we've got somebody who knows how to do it. We're just going to leverage them to do it, but they're not considering the also the amount of time. So there's there's right. there's a, a barrier that has to be overcome, and with graphics content, it takes a lot of time to make those things, um, yeah. and that's not even just saying like in the world of stock media and then using stock media to move forward. Like you're like with Lightstock specifically. And I think a lot of other organizations do this too, right? A lot lot of other media content companies, not only for churches, but for just stock, you know, license free music or license free audio video. They're using third party people as submissions, right? In a lot of cases, like you guys do accept that too, I think, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah. Like, So yeah, we've created a, we've curated a huge audience and a huge group of people that are producing, I mean, just thousands upon thousands upon thousands of products. I mean, you search something on our site and I mean, we, we, not that you can't find something that's cheesy or whatever, but we really do look at Lightstock as like, I mean, we're creatives ourselves. We have design eyes ourselves. And it's like, this is the site we would use. I mean, there's there's some, the quality here really matters to us. We we get a lot of people sending it in, but we also spend a lot of time curating it um, so that w- what you find is excellent, but that you also find lots of, lots of options. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the curation process to even just create a single piece of like, standard content, like just regular non-license, you know, just regular generic stock content. The time aspect is huge, especially when you've got somebody who's doing it and then they come in, they submit it to you guys. There's an amount of time for that one asset that nobody is considering, right? And the respect. So when you take that and you slash that time aspect out of the cost of using this, you literally, it's not even convenience anymore. It, it's now it's gone from being a luxury to a utility. It's the same thing with live streaming, you know, it's, and I'm, and I'm glad you mentioned even some of the royalty aspect of it. And we're also curating both for Lightstock and Igniter. We we're allowing content that you can still stream. You know, we've all been on the streams where it's like, Oh, we got to turn it off right now because we're doing something. We've also, we've also solved, uh, you know, we, we do our work on the front end so that you can, still um, give a full stream online. And because a lot of times you make a video or a design or something, depending on where you're using in the service, especially if it's kind of in between the service time, um, you create almost a barrier with the streaming audience or, or whatever, when you have to turn something off or, or, you know, people are pointing to something and you and the people online can't see what it is. So that's another aspect that we've, that we work hard to solve um, for, for churches. And it's easy. Like uh, the thing I think I appreciate a lot more than just the subscription price, honestly, right. <laughs> is, is the, is the ease of use. Like you guys have a really cool yeah. key f- keyword feature in there that we can search something like if we're, you can go as generic as Easter, or you can go really fine tune as like candlelight Correct. and, and get in there. And there's a whole like hundreds and hundreds of search results show up in an instant giving right. you the content and the pieces that you need. I think that's that's wonderful. And then that's that's something I think churches also don't do enough of is 
understanding the aspects of what they want in their graphics or in their content sure. and kind of boiling it down to some of those, those keyword aspects. Like that's one of the things I don't think churches right. do They're like, well, we want to have an Easter video. <laughs> right. that's great you know i mean easter's right, right. around the corner for us I, I mean easter by the time this yeah. airs easter will be over <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> you know but on the mother's like, day yeah yeah on to mother's day right like, oh, i want to do a mother's day video and yeah. okay well that's great well so there's that whole piece there like for me i just think it's an incredible tool to have yeah. in your back pocket and it's no longer a luxury it's a utility so that leads me to ask you kind of like in that regard with the, the the revolution of like how digital media has has increased like we've seen i think in the last i would say even in the last five years we have seen a quadrupling of digital content i think COVID pushed a little bit of that ahead of schedule right, right. um you know um but the the rapid development of digital media and content especially through online platforms right I think the church was behind a little bit when we started to get that. And I start, I, th I think now we're starting to push forward, but how can churches kind of utilize their stock, you know, stock media, or how can they use um, some stock content to be kind of ahead of the curve when, you know, building out their strategies or using out their, their processes for outreach and engagement. Cause that's a, that's a huge piece of the puzzle, right? Is like having that forethought and being ahead of the curve and in that regard. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a couple things. One, um, and, and Gary, make sure I'm kind of drilling in on, on what you're getting at. But one thing stock can do um, is bridge the gap. I mean, I, one thing that we would encourage churches to do is tell stories that connect with your specific people. Right. If you're capturing stories of life change in your congregation or stories of service that you're doing or evangel, what, whatever it is, um, it's important. Tell stories that are happening in your area. I mean, stories are a dime a dozen in some ways around here. And especially when you just endless media and endless people kind of creating stuff. Um, but when you when you bring it into your people, um, it, it feels differently. But even as you tell good stories, there's these transitional element moments or there's these design elements that you need that we can save you time on even while you tell a really personal story uh, that's true to your congregation. And so that would be another thing that I would just go in this place where there's just so much content. It's easy to just go find and go, oh, let me just use that ready made right off the shelf but there's still a need to tell stories within our own body. And there's no stock for some of that, but stock can help supplement it and make it easier to get a final product that looks well-rounded without having to spend all the extra little time shooting a, a flyover of this or a three second blur of this, or any number of other things. So there's a lot of design elements and transitional elements or just kind of B-roll stuff that we can supplement while you still tell your stories if that makes sense yeah you know everybody loves a good story so i mean yeah. telling the stories that matter to your community is probably the biggest yeah. i would say is one of the biggest uh pieces of advice you could give somebody you right. know in, in, in that role so let me because i have a really bigger yeah. question that i want to yeah. ask you about but before i get to that i have a little tiny one that fits into this as well so the question revolves more around um you you, you just made mention of not like beginning to have assets so that creativity can be flowing in the content driven yeah. space of that. But ready-made material, I mean, is, is very easily obtainable, you know, sure. with all kinds of different services. But what do we do about the, what do we do about the people who are the multi-hatted people in the church? Like how do we help them? Like what, what is Lightstock able to do or can do to help them creatively do it versus just giving them the assets? Like um, what do you think is like the next evolution of, of, you know, stock media. Yeah. I mean, there's, you know, it, it's going to be really interesting to see in particular, I think what happens with AI, um, you know, um, I, you know, I don't, I don't want to get too lost in all of this, but AI is largely neutral um, in terms of how we, it can be used for evil or it could be harnessed for good. And there's some, you know, um, uh, and I'm not an expert on any of that right now, 
but I do think there's going to be something. I think one of the things that, um, you know, we've seen as we've been in this space for 20 years, we've seen any number of things come along and go, oh, gosh, what is this going to put us out of business or is this what is this going to mean? You know, as, as different tools have come along and the barriers to entry uh, are a lot uh, cheaper. You know, people can go get Adobe Suite and, and they're editing stuff. Uh, it used to cost thousands upon thousands of dollars to have a Avid machine or, or any or whatever. Uh, or now you can, you know, you don't need a Red or a, a Black Magic. You got an iPhone that can do a decent amount. And it's going to be the same with AI. There's going to be a lot of tools that, uh, there's going to be a lot of things that's powerful there. Um, and so, harnessing tools but becoming excellent at that and us coming alongside and uh, you know one of the things we're specifically talking about right now is what we've t t um, consistently done as a company is there's a tool and then there's a gap between the church and going well how do I use that tool that's where Lightstock wants to come in and go hey let us help you we think there's something with AI that even with Lightstock we can come in and help I don't have, we don't have that fully solved right now, but that's what we've always done is to go churches. We're not, you don't, if you want to go solve that on your own, you can, if you want to go figure out, a, uh, you know, all of these tools on your own, but we think we can slide in and help you specifically with AI. We're in the process of trying to, to figure that out on, on how we can come alongside and help people. And if it's some of them are like, we are going to stay far away from that. It's like, well, great. Then we'll, we'll still have a lot of content over here for you. If you're a church that's like, ah, we think that we we're free to use some of the stuff that can help, but we don't know how to use it. That's again, we feel like there's a huge opportunity for, for us at livestock to come in and service and connect um, so that, you know, the church people can stay focused on their congregation as opposed to becoming as opposed to becoming experts in AI. And that's one of the things we're just candidly trying to solve like real time right now as a company. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, I know. I, and I know I've seen there's a lot of uh, content driven. Um, well, I don't want to say content driven. There's a lot of AI driven content creation services out there like right. Mid Journey, you know, right. um, yep. Co Microsoft's Copilot's one of them you know, the, like all of these little AI tools. So, and that was going to be my bigger question is like, where do yeah. you guys see AI beginning to fit into the space? Like, do you see it as an asset to the church or do you see it as a, like one of those? You And I think you made mention of it. It's like, yeah, yeah it depends on how you do it's good yeah. or evil. Like you've got a choice there, right? <laughs> like, but like for, I mean, for the church, especially, and maybe you, you and I can definitely talk to this a yeah. little bit more because we've been in the pastoral role before, but yeah. like churches are, sometimes they're really hesitant in adapting and adopting new things. Like sure. if for the longest time, churches were for, you know, we were the forerunners to stuff. I mean, the printing press, goodness yeah, gracious, for sure. You know, <laughs> the Bible being printed for the first yeah. time ever. Like we, that was us. Like we, yeah, pushed that for forward. sure. So like in an, in the role of this, like how would you see content creation? Like what, what should churches begin to, do to prepare themselves for the future of that is there is is there something that that we can yeah. speak to yeah. or think of or do uh getting informed and um understanding what it is i think the natural response is to go oh it's artificial intelligence that's not the spirit of god we gotta we gotta run far far from it and if that's your conviction peace be with you like totally lock in but um, a lot of times we form convictions in the moment when we can be doing our homework now ahead of time so that when we are in that spot, right, we're, we're kind of ready. And this goes well beyond AI. I mean, any number of times where it's like it's a theology issue and we used to this may not be the right time to share this, but um, but, you know, with, with pastoral care, you, you don't want to go what you, you don't want to be solving the problem of good is, you know, good and evil. And where does God fit into all of that when you're walking into a hospital in a difficult situation? Hopefully you've already sorted that out and then wrestled with the spirit of God on that, because it's going to if you have it and you walk into the hospital in a tragic moment it's going to mess with you even more than what that is. And it's, a, so it's same with like technology or any number of other opportunities, everything there's, of course you crack the door open on something and good things are going to get through and, and bad things are going to get through. And the ability to use AI in a lazy manner and 
uh, is going to be right there for churches. That's one of the things churches are going to have to fight is just lazily using AI. But I also think it potentially could be a miss to not harness what it could do to supplement some of the work in a very quick way. So yeah, I was I was just getting ready to reiterate yeah. that. I think I think there's new things in the, around the corner that we haven't really considered to be assets to the church because we're afraid of the the evil that can be used be, with from them, right? Or be yeah. created from them. I mean, I remember a long time ago, like as a kid, long, long, long ago in a galaxy far, far away, where the kick drum on 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 a you yeah. know a drum set was considered, you know, if you did a double kick, that was that was of the devil. You know, like <laughs> right. Yeah. That was of the devil. No double kicks on the kick drum, right? Like so like it's one of those aspects like you got to be careful it you know, is but, but in turn there are some things that i would see as um major benefits like i'm not gonna lie yeah. in our in our church we don't you we haven't used utilized ai a lot but i can tell you that it starts to get utilized when we're trying to create brand messaging like we're trying to yeah. get really good messaging out for any of our like our titles or graphics or yeah. our campaigns that we're trying to run for Easter or Mother's Day or whatever. So having having knowledge of the tools, I think you hit right on the, the nail, you know, right yeah. on the head of that is having the knowledge about it and and then doing that. So that leads me to our last two pieces to our puzzle yeah. here, my friend. Um, and one of them is actually a really softballish question for you. And it's it's super, super good. If you could give a church any advice on where to start their journey when it comes to developing their own creative mindset for using stock content. What, what would be some advice that you would give a church um, or a church leader, maybe listening or watching this right now about, about jumping into that? Yeah. I mean, um, maybe go kind of pulling as far back as you can from a church perspective. I think it's healthy for, someone leading a staff or kind of considering the weight of, of everything and that has the, their eye on the budget and the staff and, and all of these things to just have an honest assessment of, of where are we? Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think a lot of times it's the, the best thing you can do is go, what are my resources time wise, money wise, you know, staff wise, all of those things and then go, okay, within those constraints, what does excellence look like? What does um, creating content look like? Um, and so what does it mean to kind of build a library and what would, and, and start a little bit with that vision piece. What is just, if, if we lived in a perfect world, what it would be some of our aspirational uh, values here, but then what are our practical realities that we've got to operate under? So I think that's an aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and so I, I, I never want to jump past that. I feel very sensitive to the heart of the, the videographer or the designer that typically most people have no appreciation or little appreciation for the amount of time and energy that goes into this. And so, um, a pastor or a team that can connect and understand that, um, it's never as simple as, Oh, Hey, will you just make this quick change or will you put this blur on it? That. And so I think having a, an understanding and appreciation for kind of what those team members in particular uh, within your church are up against is, is critical and uh, mm -hmm. assessing, uh, assessing a lot of that. And then, um, hey, yeah, keep going. Is that getting at anything, Gary, that, yeah, that triggers man, that anything? Great. Or do you want me to go step in another uh, a beat further? That's whatever, okay. man. It's whatever okay. advice you, you feel. Because you encounter churches on a bigger basis than than I do when it comes to yeah. content media and creating that content media. Like in the yeah. Boxcast world, we focus like we want to be a video platform for churches that helps them with their outreach and their engagement. Like we really yeah. just want you to be like the, the community for your yeah. community, right? You know, that kind of thing. So yeah. you guys, you know, over at Lights, like you guys do a wonderful job. So you've encountered some churches who are probably like, well, eh, why should I do yeah. that, right? Yeah. And I, I mean, I think a general thing I would encourage churches that, uh, that you, I, I don't want to draw overarching conclusions, but you and I've seen sure. this, not done great by a lot of churches to your point. We've <laughs> yes. been kind of late adopters in this area. And I think uh, one of the biggest things I would encourage, especially if you don't have someone on staff, that's really got the eye for some of this. I don't have an eye for this stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm on this team with so many people that have this eye for it. But, um, but from my perspective as kind of a pastor that values this stuff, 
but doesn't always have an eye for it. I, I biggest picture is I'd keep it simple. Mm. I'd keep it clean and I'd keep it consistent. A lot of times you don't need that much um, to really create a look and a feel and um, sometimes simpler and clean and consistent uh, from graphic to graphic or video to video is just a gift, especially if you're starting out. Um, you know, I think one of the issues that we sometimes see is, oh, it's a graphic and you, you've you supplied the background. Now let us muddy it up a ton. And it's like right. simple and clear and consistent just helps from. Um, and so that would be one of my other things. If you're starting out, build a slow, just find a set of graphics that everyone likes that feels like it's on brand for your particular church. And I know it sounds a little, um, I mean, some people can get lost in all of this and spend too much time on it. But if you don't do any of it, I think you're setting your stuff back, but have a brand guide for your church and kind of go, Hey, what fits into this? What kind of, what's the one or two fonts we want to use? What's the color scheme? What's kind of the standard? Yeah. Are we, are we a uh, nature or are we a, uh, a brushed, you know, graphic kind of a look? Do we, we like play, just, and pick one or two and start there and then kind of build it out. And uh, sometimes keeping it simple, especially as you're trying to build something is just helpful, especially when you're in a crunch or um, up against it clockwise or budget wise um, to just kind of go, Hey, well, this is what we said we were going to agree upon. These are the parameters. So when in doubt, let's stick to it. Wow. Good stuff there for the man, the myth, the legend, Jeff Parker. <laughs> Yes, that was good stuff, man. That's excellent so, stuff. Yeah, I'm I'm glad you touched on that. Yeah. So yeah. I would say I would just I would boil it down and add it to add to it is start somewhere, right? So yeah. Start somewhere. Start small. Smart. Start yes. even. Start, start small. Yeah. Yep. Start small. So uh, last thing for you, man, Jeff. Let the friends and family here know where we can find you and Lightstock and how can they go about at least getting an opportunity to experience what Lightstock has to offer? Yeah. I mean, look, we would love uh, for you to come to lightstock.com um, and just check it out. We've got free trials um, at ignitermedia.com as well. Uh, you can come literally take a, a free test drive of it all and see what you think. Let it kind of produce, um, value in your own eyes without having to put any money down on that. I mean, that would be a great way to do it. I think um, you can follow us on any number of other ways. If you just come to our website, you can find all the other other links that uh, you need to find through that. We love to, I mean, one of our favorite things to do is to get connected with churches. So even if you mm -hmm. want to call up and and go, hey, what do, what do we need? Well, you've got all, you've got a handful of different membership options. Um, we enjoy getting to interact with our customers. That's one of the things that makes it, uh, in, you know, kind of feel real to us as opposed yeah. to, Hey, we're just creating this kind of model over here and we don't want to interact with you. And so if you get stuck, we like want to come alongside and help and answer questions. That's fun for us. Um, and again, and I think one of the things that we can help with is again, I say there's kind of two spectrums. Uh, and then there's kind of people all along the way of, I, I, I just need it done for me, help me, or I want to do it myself, but I need some resources to start. And if you're kind of like, if, if you want to just tell us where you are on that spectrum, we can really get you pointed in the right direction with the, the right membership that uh, would work for you. And so sure. that would be my biggest encouragement uh, is, is, Start there, come get a free trial. And if you get stuck on knowing what's best for you, we'll help you figure out where you are and on that continuum and uh, yeah. plug you in the right place. Fantastic. Yes, absolutely. I agree. So, the light sock trial was uh, was pivotal for me and my church. Yeah, That's good. how we made the jump. So we're appreciative. Yeah. Listen, if you haven't tried out Lightstock, please go do so. They offer a 14-day free trial, lightstock.com. It's going to be an amazing. Jeff, my friend, I am so glad that you joined me today. Thank you, my buddy, for coming on board here and talking. Love to hanging with you, Gary. Let's do it again soon.
Awesome. <laughs> Listen, if you, again, have not experienced the full breadth of BoxCast, we're here as a video platform for you at Church Organization who needs help. Make sure your content is great for content community outreach and engagement. We would love for you to connect with us. Click the link down in the bottom of the description to get a hold of us and to talk with us a little bit more about your needs that we can help you in both your live streaming and your website space. It's been a pleasure. I can't thank you guys enough for spending some time with me today and with my guests. And as always, be blessed and happy streaming. <laughs>